Hola Brazil! Chris Betcher here from Sydney, Australia. It's uh, great to be able to join you this week for your adventure theme. Um, I've been asked to come and join you by Carla and Samara uh, to talk to you about adventure and specifically about how you might use digital media to sort of record some of this adventure so later on you can use it and represent it in class and stick it on a site or whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to show you some techniques and ideas about how you'd capture this digital media. So I'm in a place right now called Wherry Beach and it's actually kind of pretty. There's the ocean over here. If you look up this way, you've got this big headland. Come back over here the other way and you've got the township and the beach and everything down there. And over this way, there's some beautiful mountains in the background. And so I thought I'd use this spot today when we talk about our adventure theme because we're out adventuring. So one of the first things I want to show you is how you'd actually use your phone to make a 360 degree image, which is kind of the things you've seen on Street View on Google Maps. So I'm just going to go in here to the Street View app and you'll see it brings up this little orange button in the bottom corner here that I'll press and I can actually take a photosphere. And what that does is it opens up my camera now. You can see on the screen here in the corner that it's got this orange dot and this white circle. And all I need to do is match up the orange dot and it takes a photo. And then I move to the next frame and it takes a photo and the next frame and it takes a photo and so on. So I'll just keep doing this and I'll come back to you. So here's that photo opened up in Google Photos and you can see it looks okay and it is a 360 photo. You can see we can move around and it looks alright. There's a couple of little things. You can see the horizon here didn't quite match up properly but we have a bit of a problem. If you look up in the sky here, you've actually got part of the cliff over here in the sky which is not ideal and you've got this big black spot here where I actually missed a bit. So you know you can do them with your phone and they can be quite good but um, I rushed this one and so it's not great. So we can probably do better. Obviously that's a lot of work to make those 360s using your phone like that. So there's another way and if you happen to have one of these, this is a 360 camera. You can see it's got a lens on both sides and when you take up one photo with this it actually takes two photos together and stitches them together into a panorama for you so you don't have to do all that tedious going around. So I'll just go in here and uh, show you how that works. So you can see on my screen there, it's actually seeing what the camera is seeing. And I've got both sides, I can walk around this side or I can walk around this side and it gets all of me. So the camera is actually seeing everything, all 360 degrees. And it's showing up on the phone, so all I need to do really, ideally get out of the frame and I can't really do that here, but if I just press this button, you see it says shooting in progress, bang, it takes that image and now what it'll do is it'll take the two halves of that and stitch them together into one photographic sphere. And it's just taking a moment to do that, but you'll see the result in just a second. So here we are, this is the result of the photo taken with the 360 camera. And you can see it's a lot better than the previous one. Uh, the horizon is level, there's nothing floating around in the sky up here, there's no missed bits. You can see we can go all the way around and everything is there. And so, you know, it's pretty good. The only real evidence is if you look straight down, you can in fact see the tripod that it was standing on and of course the shadow of the tripod right there. But other than that, it's actually pretty good. And so if you want to do 360 photos and you want to do a lot of them, I would suggest getting yourself one of those cameras. But you can do it on your phone if you really want to. Now, there's a third way that I want to show you how you can take these 360 photos and that's with a drone. If you've got a modern drone with a camera on the front, um, these things can also do 360 degree images as well. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so this little drone here has this mode where you can do 360 photos. So let me just show you how that works. So I go in there and choose uh, from the photo selection here, this thing called pano mode. And from pano mode, I can choose a sphere. Now watch what happens when I take a 360 with this. I'll press the button and you can see it starts to now, the camera starts to move and it's now taking photos from all different angles. Then it moves to the next one and it does exactly the same thing that I was doing with my phone except it's just doing it autonomously. So that's how this works. As soon as this little demo is done, I'll take it up higher and give you an example of how it looks from higher up.
Okay, so here's our final example. This is the 360 photo now taken from the drone up at 50 meters altitude. And you can see it's a really interesting perspective. You get a pretty good quality picture. Um, and I think, you know, this whole idea of being able to use 360 degree photos to capture your experience and your adventures uh, is a really interesting way to digitize the experience and bring it back to your classroom in a way that kids can do something with uh, some really rich multimedia stuff. Now, you remember the Street View app that we used initially to take that first photo? Well, the other thing you can do in here is to import a 360 photo. And so you can see if I go in here and find the photo that I want, which is um, actually in here, that one there. Okay, if I take that photo, you'll see it recognizes the 360 photo. It's even added the listing, Wherry Beach, New South Wales, Australia. If I select that photo, I can hit the upload button there and now it's taking that image and it's publishing it to Google Maps. So this is a great way of taking the, these, these photographs that you're taking, and it doesn't matter whether it's from a camera or a drone or from the phone itself, and you can upload these and have them show up on Google Maps. All right, so here we are over in Google Maps itself, and I'm just going to zoom in here, uh, find roughly where we were the other day. It's around about here somewhere. There you go. So this little piece of beach here, this is where we were standing the other day. In fact, if I go to satellite view here, you can see there's the headland, there's the beach, and so on. I was standing around about here. Pretty phenomenal that you can do this in maps. Talk about taking your adventures out to the world and bringing them into your classroom. So here we are where that was shot. Down in the corner, you've got this little yellow guy called Pegman. And if I just press Pegman, you notice that some blue lines and some blue dots appear, and they represent anywhere there's 360 imagery. And so you can see there's a blue dot right there. And if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that blue dot. If I click on that, it will actually zoom me in and take me to the 360 degree image that I took. This, this one was with the drone. Um, not the same one as I showed you before, but another of these 360 images. This ability to be able to go and drop your 360 images onto a map and share them with your world uh, and share those adventures, pretty amazing stuff. All right, we're nearly there. So far, so good. We've collected some media in the form of 360 photos. We've learned how to upload them to Google Maps and get them there. Um, we've we're making progress. So now, what if we want to put some of this media we've collected onto a Google site? So I've just gone here to Google Sites, and I've started a site here. I've called it Adventure Time. And the first thing I'd like to do maybe is just to change the header image. So you know if I go to Change Header Image here, I can, I can select an image, and there's a bit of a gallery of um, you know some built-in images here, but none of them are really what I like. So let's cancel that and go back to here, Change Image, and this time I'm going to upload one of my own. So if I pop in there and I've got some images here and this is, I know this is the one I want here, this beautiful image here. So I'll say open and that will then take that image and load that in as the background image for my header. You remember I showed you how you can go to Google Maps and you can click on Pegman down here and make these blue dots appear. And every time you see one of these blue dots, it's a 360 photo that somebody has uploaded. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is to go to the photo that I uploaded, which is this one and click on that. And you'll notice that in Google Maps here, up in the top corner where it says whose photo it is, I can click on the three dots and go share or embed image. So let's do that. Now I get either a link to share, which is just the URL, or this embed a map image here. And that's really what I want. So let's get the, uh, let's get the large size. Okay, so we'll do that and say copy the HTML. Right, that's copied. Now I can go back over to my site here and from this embed button on the side, click that and you can either paste in the URL, which is not what we have, or the embed code, which is what we have. So I go in there, paste, and you can see it pops in there and I go next. And yep, that's great. That looks like what I want. I say insert and it now adds that into my Google site. Now I'm going to show you a little hack here that's... Uh, First of all, that image, because I picked the large size, it's 800 pixels wide. And you can see it's from here, this edge, over to this edge, that's 800 pixels. And I, even if I stretch the frame out the whole width, the image doesn't go any wider because it's only set to be a certain height and width. Now, there's a way you can fix this. This is a little hack, don't be scared. 
if I go into the pl the uh, the edit button here, you'll notice if you look at this code, and don't get put off by the code, but if you look in here, it says width equals 800, height equals 600. You can change these numbers to whatever you want. I'm going to put in 100%. And when you put a percent sign in, what it does is it makes it scale. However wide the page is, the image will be 100% of that page width. So this means it'll work well on any size screen, mobile, tablets, computers, doesn't matter. And you can also change the height here. It's currently set to 600, but I'm going to go for more of a panoramic image here by going 500 and say next. And when I save that now, you'll see that that image now fills that whole frame. And I can actually close some of this space up that I no longer need. So that's now what that looks like. Now, if I go to preview mode by clicking on the preview button up here, you'll see this is what the website looks like. It's got that lovely header, but this image here is in fact a 360 image and it's embedded right directly in the website. So you can use this. Remember our idea here. We're trying to digitize our adventures. We're trying to go out into the real world, collect digital media, bring it back to our computer and present it in a way we can tell stories about the places we've been and the adventures we've had. And so this embedding of 360 images is one really nice simple way where we can bring that directly to our website. Now, since we're talking about building a website using Google Sites, there's a couple of other things that might be worth knowing about. And one of them, if I just scroll down this page a little bit, you can see over on the insert menu on the site here, there's a number of things I can add. And one of the logical things, if you're talking about having an adventure somewhere, is to include a map of where that happened. So you can see I've got the map option here. Let's click on that. And I can use either maps or even my maps if you've got something built in my maps, but let's just use maps. So the location in this case was a place called Wary Beach, and there it is right there. So you can see, there you go, it's found the beach. And that's great. If I wanted to drop a particular place mark, I could click on this little button here and I actually move that to a different location. Let's go, we were about, uh, we were about here somewhere. There you go. So we'll drop that there. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Just move the map around a little bit so we know exactly where we're looking. So we, let's do that. I could go satellite view if I wanted and, and choose that. But I, I think I'll just stick to regular map view for now. Click the select button and that then drops the Google map of that location directly onto my Google Sites page. And again, if I want it to be wider or narrower or resize somehow, I can do that. And so you can see that's how that works there. The other thing you might like to drop onto your Google site, if you've been out collecting a whole bunch of digital image, imagery and, and uh, you know, photos and videos, is to include this image carousel. So putting a single photograph on a website is nice, but you've got this image carousel option now where you can actually insert multiple images. So if I just go to the upload image thing here, let's pick a couple of images. I think I've got maybe this one and uh, I'm just going to hold down the command key here and pick another one and another one. So there's three images. That's enough for now. If I click that, that's just going to take a moment to upload. And here we are. Here's the images. I did speed that up a little bit just to uh, make it quicker for you to watch. Uh, it can take a while depending on the size of your original images. Now I've done that, I click the insert button and it inserts this image carousel. And again, let's just make it wide because we can. So we'll make that nice and wide there like that. And there are some settings. This little gear wheel at the top here gives you a couple of settings um, underneath this gear wheel. Show the dots means these three dots at the bottom here to indicate there are three photos here. Show the captions if you want to have captions underneath. I, I don't in this case, so I'll turn that off. And whether you want to auto start, so when the page loads, whether they just automatically start moving. I like that idea, so I'll turn that on. And transition speed for me, I like them to go very slowly. So let's just turn that on very slow and hit the update. And that's now added to that page. Now, so what we've got on this Google Sites page now, we've got a lovely header with one of the images that we took on our adventure. We've got a 360 image that we took ourselves on our adventure. We've got a Google map down here that tells people where this adventure actually took place. And finally, we've got some photos down here embedded in an image carousel, which will automatically change. So let's go to the preview mode to see what this looks like. So here's our website. There's our 360 uh, photo all embedded. There's our Google map right there. And by the way, we can pick it up and move it around. So it is actually um, free to work with directly in the page. And down the bottom here, here's our image carousel. And you can see there it is. There's the first image. 
and it will automatically change to the second image and of course to the third image and there are little buttons on the side here if you want to sort of move through that uh, faster or slower than that um, the nice thing about google sites too this little bar down the bottom corner here lets you preview to see what this would look like right now we're seeing what it would look like on a computer but we can see what it would look like on a tablet and you can see that still looks pretty good okay uh, or we can go down here and see what it would look like on a mobile phone but that's how you can go out into the world, collect all your digital media, bring it back to a Google site, and tell the world some amazing stories about your amazing adventures. Thanks for joining me.